So one of my favorite baits in the springtime is a jerk bait. I use lots of different brands. They're all unique in their own ways. A common one a lot of people throw is a Mega Bass 110. Right out of the pack, they're a good bait, but I do a lot of things to them that modify how they work, make them work better for me on a given day, depending on water temp, water clarity, and gives them a little different action that helps me catch more fish in pressured waters. Something I will do, sometimes I'll switch the hooks out. These are the VMC Redline hooks. And a lot of people think that the stock out barb hooks that come with the Mega Bass, they're light wire, they have to be light wire because the weight matters, and it does, uh, which we'll get into. I don't like jerk baits to float. When I watch a shad dying, it'll twitch and then it sinks head first. Uh, you never see a shad twitch and then float to the surface or not commonly. So what I want mainly with my jerk baits is when they sit in the water, I want them to sit nose down. And depending on the water temperature, either suspend perfectly or slow sink. If I'm fishing deeper water, uh, this jerk bait stock I can get it about nine, 10 feet deep. If I'm fishing a deeper reservoir, a glacial lake where the fish are wanting it 12 feet deep, uh, sometimes I'll use heavier hooks or I will use lead wire, fly tying wire. You can buy pretty much anywhere, Bass Pro, Cabela's, anywhere online. And I'll weight my hooks with it. Some baits right out of the package will slow float. I prefer a slow float jerk bait so I can tune it the way I want it tuned. Some baits right out of the package suspend perfectly. That's fine too. You can still get a slow sink if you want. And then some of them slow sink, which again are okay if you want a slow sink. Uh, I always prefer to tune them to what I want to do. If I'm going to fish shallower rocks, shallower flats, I would like my jerk bait to suspend so it's not sinking down into the rocks. So I'm fishing a deeper glacial lake where I'm fishing a rock flat a little deeper, I do want it to sink because I can move that jerk bait along at a deeper depth and if it starts to slowly sink, twitch it again, bring it up a few feet, slow sink again. These red line hooks on this specific jerk bait really make the jerk bait run exactly how I would want it. So as it sits in the water, it's going to sit nose down, which helps me, I believe, when you twitch it, you get a harder resistance, which is gonna make that walk the dog action easier without moving the bait very far. My, my biggest belief in jerk bait fishing is keeping it in the strike zone. So if we're fishing a 45 degree rock and we're casting 45 degrees down it, I can watch it on the live scope coming down those rocks and you want it fairly close to the rock sometimes, it comes in so handy when you can pause it, have the jerk bait tuned perfectly where it suspends perfectly in the water, coming down that break, and then it just sits there right in front of them, sun reflects off of it, you trigger a lot more bites. The colder the water, the longer the pause, and when you can tune it just perfectly and sit it there, you'll get more bites, and also with that nose down, sometimes you gotta twitch it, a light bump or a hard bump, and when, you're, when your bait sits nose down and you bump it, it's not moving by feet, it's moving by inches. So you're still getting that reaction out of it, but the bait's not moving out of the strike zone. And I think those two things right there, keeping it in front of them and not moving the bait too far uh, plays a big factor. I throw typically heavier fluorocarbon line. I fish around a lot of brush, a lot of rocks. I'll throw 12 to 15, this is 15, which some people may think it's crazy. It works well for me because fluorocarbon sinks. So I can get my jerk bait on a long cast, a 70 foot cast, pull it down to the depth with weighted hooks and this. I can keep my bait down deeper, further and faster with the heavier line. Uh, this is Seaguar Invisex that I'm using. I'm using it on a 6.3. Uh, this is an old school G Loomis. SBR 752, it's, this is like a medium action. Pretty much every other rod I own is seven foot or longer, but I prefer a short rod for jerk baiting for very specific reasons. In fact, this rod, a 6.3 is perfect for me. I can down twitch easily, getting the bait deeper. If you're side twitching, you're pulling the bait up more. If you can down twitch, it's gonna keep that bait deeper. If you have a seven or a seven and a half or whatever you twitch with, 
you're moving the bait more. The shorter the rod, the less it's gonna move the bait, because even though you think you're just barely bumping it, the longer the rod, the faster the tip's moving. With a six foot three, especially when I'm live scoping, I can do light little bumps where I just hit my slack line with the short rod, and that bait is just barely moving side to side. Again, with having the head down, the fish is sitting there looking at it on live scope, you know he's about to hit. The last thing you want is a longer rod where you go to tap it and it moves it two feet away from him in a hard jerk. Springtime, yes, you get reaction bites, but it's still cold, the fish are still lethargic, and having to be able to control that bait with that short rod just seems to get bit. Jerk baits with three good trebles on it usually have every hook in the fish. It's not as big of a concern to play them if you're away from the trees and stuff like that. When I get around trees, I'll use the heavier line, a heavier rod, just so I know I can stick them and get them out of there. But most of the jerkbait fishing I do is more open water over rocks. I'm using a fast reel. This is a 8.1, 8.3 Lose LHS. It's a, the right price for me. I'm a guy that I look for a nice reel that functions properly and is priced for me. This is $100 normally. If you get it on sale, Tackle Warehouse anywhere when they have their sales, it's a great workhorse reel. It's been great for me. We'll catch some fish on it today, that's for sure.